So, hello again. I am here. It's Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. And of course, I am with Andy from Snow Camps Europe. We're back to do another load of garbage chat about <laughs> the ski industry and see if there's any subjects that we can uh, interest you in this time. So, how's it been, Andy? Because we tend to do these in um, clumps. So I haven't seen you for a while while I was uh, in Dubai. Well, you were swanning around. Yeah, it's funny. Someone stopped in the supermarket the other day and said, how have you managed to record so many podcasts with Paul when he's not here? <laughs> I said, yeah, we, we sit down, we do them all in one day. Because we're committed <laughs> and we exactly. work hard for <laughs> one day. Yeah. <laughs> batch, batch, batch content creation, I think yeah. they call it. But no, it's, it's all good. We've had we've had a fair bit of power the last few weeks, which has been enjoyable. Why you've been in the desert, um, getting cars stuck in sand by the look of things. Yes, um, we'll save that for another another day, maybe. Yes, but idiot. Um, quite quite a bit been going on in the industry from what I've seen. There's a new ski show has popped up um, that's going to be in the NEC. Yes, well, as Ski Instructor Academy um, and other companies that I'm involved with are actually going to be exhibitors and that I was aware of that one that popped up it came about because of the demise of the um, London Battersea the Telegraph show um, and there was always this um, vibe that they were going to do something else and yet it came about and we decided like a lot of other exhibitors to get on board with this show that will be in Birmingham on the uh, 23rd and 24th of October um, but since then, we were just discussing offline that um, we have noted that somebody, the smart group, jumped back in into Battersea and they are wanting to and will be running another London um, festival, we'll call it, Snow Festival, that will run literally the same, well, almost just a few days later, on the 28th of October, there'll be another show. And is this not remnants of, uh, of what we had previous? Because we've also got something going on, potentially, and I think it's a go-ahead as well, at Hemel Hempstead. Um, so we end up again with a satellite of these shows going on, that was what they tried to avoid a few years ago, where they wanted to say, look, let's just have one main event, and that way it's not going to water things down, but it seems that it's um, all gone crazy with COVID. Yeah, it, it, it seems strange, because it does look like we're going back to, well, several years ago, when I remember the last time I went to a ski show, which was quite a long time ago, that you could go to Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham, London, um, and yeah, well, you're talking about 1990 now, are you, Andy, or what? <laughs> I, would, I would think late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. So I say a long time ago, but it was funny because obviously that changed massively and became one show. Yeah. Um, and it was all at the time, I think it was the Daily Mail ski show, wherever you went, and it was spread out over, I think it was October, November. But they ended up being consolidated into one big show because... Well, the industry just didn't need it, did no. it? It, it, it? The thing is, as well, is I, I don't have the experience of the, the, the shows that you have because I've only been there as an exhibitor and normally the marketing and sales division does that in the UK. But I have been asked to go down for the last five years to assist and help the, the, the sales team down in the show. So I've only seen the, the, the recent ones. Yeah. And my impression of them were... Uh, not what I expected, actually, because they, they seem to be more like, a, uh, I don't know, like trying to book a travel holiday. There was a lot of resorts and tour operators, that yeah. sort of thing. My, my observations of the old ones, it, st it started off quite a, quite a good day out. You wanted to go to the ski show. There was things to see. All of the big products and the brands were there. And there was an element of holiday companies. There was ski schools there. There was all sorts of stuff there. And that slowly turned into a jumble sale basically it was a place where people would go to sell last year's product um so ellis brigham's would have a massive big stand selling um clothing so would snow and rock um and then that evolved into as you just almost said a place to go and book a holiday and nearly every single stand was either a tourism office from the country uh, so let's say from france uh, or from austria and then there was all of the holiday companies at so Ingham's, Ski Total, Crystal. Back then there was Nielsen, there was First Choice, there was umpteen holiday companies. And it wasn't really a ski show, it was a ski holiday show. Yeah, and that's the, the impression I, that I got was, um, it, it did get better towards the last one before it, it finished, but what I, what my impression was that it was like you say sh selling chalets these these new sh chalet type holidays etc or you would actually have the startups 
So uh, we would be inundated on the stand with people popping by and you think, oh, it's somebody coming to buy, a, you know, a ski course or whatever. And then they go, I've, I've got this new tracking idea. And what I'm doing is I'm selling a chip that, you know, you can put in the, the kids' pockets or something and you can track them on the mountain to see where they were. Or, or we're selling a new clothing brand. It's like, do we really need a new clothing brand? Like, how many am I going to have? You know, oh, we're organic. We're green and we, you know, everything's brown and whatever. And it was, <laughs> it just got, that was what it was. It was a lot of that. That would be there one year, gone the next, yeah. you know. I think, I think it is for sure a place for startups. And you see some of them that started um, going to the ski show that have become very big. And I would say somewhere like Plank. Planks. Right, yeah, yeah, Plank. Um, they've, they've done pretty well. But then there are some of these other smaller ones. As you say, They'll be there for one year and then you probably won't see them again or they might be there for one or two years. They'll sell a little bit of clothing. They'll have a little bit of sales after that, but the brand doesn't resonate with people so it never gets anywhere. Yeah. And what's funny is I think the with the um, emergence of um, being able to buy goggles um, from China, get them branded, put them in a box and they look extremely professional, means anybody can start a ski goggle brand. Yeah. You can also now with print print on demand you can start a, a, a clothing brand of any genre and a lot of people have gone down the route of skiing t-shirts skiing sweatshirts we obviously we sell our merchandise for sia and for snow camps but literally anybody we can give we, hang on Andy, no no we give our merchandise away sorry i say it does <laughs> not sell merchandise okay. we actually give it away so <laughs> that's how nice we are Wow. <laughs> that's why we're broke <laughs> get yourself down to the ski shop for some free merchandise <laughs> yes exactly exactly i agree i agree and it's like um i don't think it's a bad thing what you said before where some of the big boys go in and they're trying to sell off their products from last season i, I don't think that's bad when people get the opportunity to buy cheap ski gear that are they really bothered because the um the um surface of the skis now changed color but it's the same ski or the jackets the same jacket but it's green instead of brown or whatever the colors are for this year some people don't mind they just want the quality so I, I thought that was okay but certainly when I was there the last few years it was trying to do a lot of things it was trying to be entertaining to some people you know it was trying to do it you know let's have some kids jumping in the park outside and on an ice rink or whatever but at the same time you had Japan there Canada there France there trying to sell their holidays and then obviously people like ourselves trying to interest people into the whether it be the gap year market or sabbatical from work retirement and wanting to do ski or snowboard course there was that mix there but it never really seemed to be doing any of anything it was like a jack of all trades then yeah a bit and of a mess uh, you just said there about um, people out in out in the car park doing jumps and things and one of the things that i saw with battersea is it was very much new school it was more about the freestyle and mm. um jumping and the snowboards cool and aerials yeah and, and f me as a 30 year old man yeah, so an older <laughs> gentleman. Uh, to be honest if i if i was going to a ski show i wouldn't want to stand and watch kids jumping off kickers um, no. because it, do, it, it doesn't relate to me obviously I, I understand it I know it it's but it's not something that kind yeah. of would make and I me think go to a show they were trying to entertain the family though weren't they so if mother and father had something to do the kids would have something to look at and things I could see the idea behind it um but yeah it it, it sort of lost its way um but I must admit from Ski Instructor Academy side it was actually very successful the last two shows were very very successful to the point where, you know, normally it's a generic thing. You're there to, you know, for your brand, to advertise your brand. But actually people would book at the show. And mm -hmm. we would get, you know, eight to ten people booking courses, which was unusual. And of course it gave us the opportunity because of its timing to meet people, Andy, before they were just going to fly out. Because it sort of falls on the same weekend as when our courses start. Mm -hmm. So we had a chance to meet people as well. Um, but now, with this new <laughs> structure, it's like, great. So we invest thousands of euros into a show in Birmingham. Yeah. But not to miss out, we now need to also invest the same amount of money into a show in London and then Bethesda. probably into Hemel Hempstead as well. Yeah. And But really, am I hitting a bigger audience? No, it's probably either the same audience who, you know, these people who want to go to all these shows or uh, people are going to choose one or the other. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's going to dilute it again. It's going to go back to, as we said, how it was when we had them in every major city. One thing I would say, and, and I've spoke on a previous podcast about this, is when I came out to um, Austria to meet you guys from the SIA, when I was planning on coming back and requalifying, it would have been so much easier for me if I had been able to go to a ski show where SIA had been, because I would have been able to come and meet you there rather than have to come all the way to Austria. Um, now, obviously, I, I came on a holiday and combined the coming to see you guys to talk about the courses. But I think one thing that the ski show has possibly are good for nowadays, because there are many course providers, is to go and actually talk to the course providers face to face. Yeah, you're going to get a much better feeling of who you want to go and do a course with. And obviously, this is the reason that you guys have been at the ski show for the last, I don't know, three, four years. Oh, longer than that. Was it longer? Yeah. Whatever. But it's, um, yeah. And then they meet me in the, the pool <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> go, go anywhere. No, it, it's true. Yeah. It's, I think it is a great opportunity when people are spending, you know, between four and 10 and 12,000 euros um, on a course that they get the opportunity to get a feel for what is this product. Um, and of course, Ski Instructor Academy always falls back on the same thing is, look, we are a training company. We're not an agent. We're not a travel agent. We're not selling to somebody else. You are meeting the team when you go to um, one of these shows. And that's why really we, we, we are going to end up in all of them again. Um, but from having no shows, which is what mm. happened, you know, just before COVID, et cetera, that was it. No more shows. We're now back to people going to have a choice again is to which show should they go to? And it's probably going to fall down to I'm um, closer to Birmingham or it's easier to get to Birmingham yeah. or is it easier to get to, to London? Yeah, I think B Birmingham, again, that's a great move from this the National Snow Show uh, nice. that they've done that in the NEC because obviously Birmingham is very central. The rail links um, are fantastic. Um, you would say the road links are fantastic as well, although if you go via Birmingham, you're going to get caught. Um, so use the toll road. Um, but yeah, it's it's a much better location than Battersea, in my opinion. Yeah, Battersea is not easy to get to. And it's hotel wise for exhibitors. It only left us with a few options. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I always found because I, I have not been in England for 25 30 years I, I i would find it difficult you know i'd be flying in going now what do i need to do oh i've got to get this tube then i've got to get on another one and it, it was yeah it was yeah, for, for people coming anywhere i would say from birmingham or up getting the train down to london then you've got to navigate the tube to get to battersea yeah and again if you you probably if you want to make a whole day and night of it you're probably as a, a customer or as a visitor going to need a place to stay as well yeah and it's not cheap and i'm not saying birmingham is that much cheaper but there are going to be much more options yeah. for budget accommodation for those people. Yeah, and around it, because over. when I looked at this, I've already, strangely enough, I'd already booked the flights for the Birmingham one mm -hmm. and the hotel, and it was a lot cheaper, actually, mm -hmm. when I was looking at the hotels, especially for the team to book um, hotel rooms for each of the sales team. But then British Airways cancelled my flight. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so we, due to COVID, we are cancelling your flight, but, but it's the 28th of... Freaking oh God, sorry, the 23rd of October. How can you be mm. cancel my flight now? Um, but I was looking because Andy then drew my attention to the um, to the sites because Andy's the, the the man when it comes to looking at the loopholes and looking at the the <laughs> cracks of things because I'm just out of touch. Um, and he was saying that um, you know when we look at it, you can see that you can become an ambassador for the snow show. Um, and you were saying, like, you know, when I, I'm scrolling through the page now and looking at all these uh, wonderful faces of people in their ski gear as ambassadors, and what what, what benefits do they get? Um, they get um, they get a ticket allocation, from what I understand. Um, they also can be at the show for free. Um, they get some clothing. Um, I do know a friend of mine, Matt. He does um, ski related vlogs, and he's going to be there interviewing some of the exhibitors for his vlog. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, wow, I, look at this. You get a, a, a money can't buy VIP ticket okay. to get through to the VIP area. Hey, they might meet me. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, that could be where I, that's where <laughs> I am. I, I just sit in the VIP area. What, what a thrill. What a thrill. <laughs> you get an, ambassa for, for you get an ambassador's t shirt and a VIP goodie bag full of SIA products, no doubt. Uh, the opportunity to network with other ambassadors, invitation to attend ambassador events, profile page, free tickets for your friends, club members, social following. Well, that's interesting because I always thought at the Telegraph show they were careful with their tickets. Mm -hmm. 
but here they seem to be uh, it looks cloud. like a giveaway and and it's funny because since i looked at the website and spotted the ambassador page and uh, he was all over it he, was, he's selling them online the tickets at the minute <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. he's got himself a hundred <laughs> I'm, I'm touting the tickets out um no I, I i since looking at that and it was probably because of cookies or something that i just kept seeing on facebook people posting get your free tickets get your free tickets get your free tickets uh, how how good a quality is this show gonna be if it's all free 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 tickets is is my kind of question hey it could um, be it could be that's what could make it good because possibly could. possibly yeah at least there'd be a crowd there i mean it, it got interesting on that bad one because i remember the first season i was there and it must have been um obviously we've been doing it for a while but i i was asked to come down and it was i thought it was quiet you know in general it wasn't that especially because they ran it from the thursday afternoon and who's around on thursdays you know it would tend to pick up a bit on friday and saturday and then start to die a death again on sunday, sunday you know you, yeah. you were everybody was tapping around just wanting to unpack and of course they had all these rules and regulations andy they would say like you know on Sunday, you know, because of health and safety in England now, you, you cannot um, start, um, what are you? Dismantling. Dismantling yeah. your stand until, you know, five o'clock um, because it's, you know, helmets have to go on, vests yeah. and all this rubbish. Of course, by about half past two, <laughs> people were starting to take chunks of everywhere, you know, and the walls were coming down and everything. And the guys were running around going, no, you can't do that, you know, and it's like, do you think I'm paying all this money for you to tell me that? There's nobody here, it's empty. You know? yeah. we, we, I used to, when I was in the drinks industry, used to do all the big drink shows in in and around london and um i remember one of the girls who was working with us turned up in a pair of flip-flops one day and she was asked to leave uh, this is why we were building the stands because she had flip-flops on and health and safety said she had to have closed shoes in case the stray nail from one of the carpenters building the stands <laughs> would make her would make the way into the into her foot so yeah no uh, it is a bit crazy that they um you have to stay open until you stay open on these things, even when everybody's left. But yeah, let's let's wait and see see what happens. Um, I'd be interested. Obviously, we hope the world has all been vaccinated by October. But what will the COVID restrictions be? Will there still be masks indoor, the sh inside the show, and all that sort of stuff? I suppose yeah. is is to be confirmed. Because that was the, the 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 question on our lips was always where are we going to position ourselves at the show because there was indoor. And also the possibility of outdoor. And generally, we would think it over. And Gary and I, being a little older, would go, "Yeah, I think we need to be indoor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be in the pouring rain October. outside in London." <laughs> and sometimes it worked out for the outdoor shows because it would be relatively okay. But it was an instant change as soon as it rained. Everyone's inside. Everybody's inside, and it was like the, the traffic moving through was was different, you know. And it was also a, a situation where I remember I had a. When we first went to the, the show, and I, I think it must have been seven years ago, that London one or six years ago, um, they, we had obviously pre-planned, as we do, and, you know, location-wise within this huge building. And we got this phone call about, I think it was two weeks before the show started. And the guy turned around and he went, yeah, I'm having to move your stand um, because um, such and such, I'll not mention the, 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 the country that was buying up like all the stands in the middle of the room. So we're just going to push you down into this corner. I was like, what? Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> it was like a ghost town, you know, like the way it was like, you're kidding. It's like, you can't do that. Like two weeks before the show, we've designed the stand, we've got yeah. it all positioned and all this. Yeah, no, we'll make the same dimensions. Yeah, but it's, nobody's going to walk over there. No, no. And I went, oh, we'll just cancel it. He went, no, no, can't cancel it. It's part of the terms and conditions. I can move your stand. It was like, yeah, okay then, right? If that's your terms and conditions, we can't cancel it. But... I'm not coming next year. Yeah. And that was it. We didn't then go for a few years because of that until it then changed hands. And then at that point, they kept ringing up and they were going, why don't you come back to the show? And it was like, yeah, because you changed our stand at the last second. And it was a disaster. And we warned you it was going to be a disaster for us. So they said they would never do that again. And then we ended up going back. Was it France that was buying up all of the uh, stands? Actually, it wasn't. It was, I want to say, American. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they shout loud. Yeah. Um, and I think I think it was. It might have been. Well, let's blame the French. Bigger let's blame the French. Yeah, let's blame the French. You know. So hey, look. If you are considering um, going to one of the shows, it doesn't really matter which one because I, I'll be there. Well, I, I, I probably won't be there actually because that's the other problem, Andy. Is this one on the twenty eighth to the thirty first of October? falls exactly when we would probably be having 300 people arriving in resort so 
you'll meet the sales team down there. But I'll probably try and get to this Birmingham one. So if, you want, if you want to meet Paul, 23rd <laughs> to 24th of October, Birmingham NEC at the National Snow Show. Um, yeah, go, go, and, go and see him. Go and see me. <laughs> you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna finally be in the, the busy, VIP area. The busiest, man, <laughs> the busiest man at the snow show. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Uh, anything to add, Andy? No, enjoy, enjoy the ski shows if you go. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comments in October. Come back and yeah, tell which us what they're like. Yeah, no, or, or better still, let us know in the comments. Which show would yeah, you go to? Yeah, which one are you going to? to? Which one are you going to go to? Um, we might be able to get you free tickets for the National Snow Show. <laughs> <laughs> Andy can sell you some dodgy ones. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now, everyone.